Hi, today is Whit Monday, uh, June 5th, 2017. It's Denmark's National Day, and this is a Swiss fix. And, uh, well, since Ramadan began recently, we have experienced a lot of Islamic terror. And, well, we've experienced that for a long time before that too, by the way. So we are seeing a pattern here that I, I think we cannot ignore it anymore. Just, just take the last year or so, or the last few years. You had San Bernardino, California. You had Orlando. You had Nice. You had Paris. You had Berlin last Christmas. Stockholm in April. St. Petersburg. Manchester, which was really horrible. London twice in a short time. Are we seeing a pattern here yet? Are we seeing what inspires these acts? They are not inspired by socio-economic factors or any of that, any of these stupid statements. Because if that was the case, why aren't we seeing any Christian terrorism in Pakistan? You could talk about social economic factors there. Why aren't we seeing any Christian revenge attacks in Egypt? Could you tell me that, please? Why aren't we seeing any Christian terrorism in Nigeria, where they are attacked by, by Muslims? At least none, none that I've heard of. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, if we are seeing this pattern, we cannot just stare into the wall and hope that everything works itself out. Well, there is this meme on the internet, on Facebook and on social media. Pray for London. Yes, we should pray for London. We should pray hard for London. And you know what? I am not a Roman Catholic, but there is one, one, one of the things the Catholics say that I actually like, and that's ora et labora, which means pray and work. Or as the Bible says, faith without works is dead. So first we pray to get God's guidance, and then we work to make the world better, trying to listen to his voice. That's what we do, or that's what we're supposed to do. At least if we're Christians. I mean, I know that not all of the people watching this are Christians, but hey, I am happy to have you as fellow travelers in fighting Islam. I'm not going to argue with you on the theological points or anything like that. Don't worry about that. I'm just stating where I come from. So, so what do we have to do about this? That's the question. And, well, if you ask me, we have to stop believing that it will help to hold vigils and hand out coffee like the Swedish police did to people burning cars. Or, well, not while they were burning the cars, but after, so they didn't know who was burning cars or not. But when they were handing out coffee and hot dogs, I suppose these hot dogs uh, were, were not pork. I guess it must have been chicken hot dogs or something like that. I suppose. I don't know, but I guess. And, you know, I've got my family history. Which I am very proud of, by the way. You know I'm a Swede, right? That's correct. However, my, my father's parents came from Finland in the 1950s. And my paternal grandfather fought in the war against the Soviets. As did his father-in-law a little earlier. In the Winter War. While my paternal grandfather fought in the Continuation War. But they, they fought. If they would have tried to, to fight the Russians or the Soviets by giving them coffee and hot dogs or even vodka for that matter that would have worked very very poorly they would have lost their freedom they would have lost their country and we are there today now again but even worse europe and the western world is under attack under attack by islam and someone says okay which which country has invaded europe well okay no country but what we are seeing in, in Western Europe especially, and you will see it in Canada too, mark my words on that. If you keep on with the stupid policies of, uh, of that beta male Trudeau, you're going to see it there too. What we are seeing is a low intense civil war, asymmetric. Islam has declared war on the West. And they are fighting it. We pretend, or not me, because I swallowed the red pill three years ago roughly but a lot of us pretend that nothing's happening and everything's gonna be fine if we just are nice and we're gonna we're gonna win our enemies over by being nice to them 
And there's a special brand of Christians who think something like that, that they're going to see how nice we Christians are and they're going to convert. Well, some do. And I welcome all converts. And by the way, do you know that ex-Muslims are usually the most harsh critics of Islam, whether they convert to Christianity or not, but the ex-Muslims I'm hearing, they really don't like Islam. And and they are hard. They are sometimes even harsher critics than I am. Anyway, so, because some people say, like Theresa May, she says this is Islamism. She says this is a perversion of Islam. No, it's not a perversion. And people call it political Islam or Islamism. Some use the word Islamofascism. I kind of like the word Islamofascism, by the way. But, and you can use these words if you like to. But remember this. Islam is political by its very nature. Muhammad was both a spiritual and a worldly leader. He wasn't just some kind of spiritual prophet. He wasn't a prophet, by the way. What was his prophecy? But okay, let's say he was a prophet. Well, maybe he... Let's say he was. I don't, I don't uh, recognize him as a prophet. But let's say he was. Well, he was also a worldly leader who did all kinds of atrocities. And he was, according to Islam, the perfect person. You are not allowed to criticize him. So, radical Muslims are just following his example. And that is why we have to fight Islam. We have to fight them on the ideological battleground. And we have to close the, the borders. The, West, the borders of the West to Islamic immigration. And, okay, maybe, maybe there is a peaceful majority. Maybe so, I don't know. Some numbers say that oh, only 5% are radicals. Others say it's 30%. I don't know. I haven't done any in-depth studies. I just see what I see. And I try to study the subject as good as I can. But it doesn't matter. If you have 20 apples, and you know that one of these apples is poisonous, and it's going to kill you, but you don't know which one of them, would you eat any of the apples? I would not. But it seems like most of the of the politicians of the leaders of the western world are perfectly fine with eating the apples and hoping it's going to work out fine merkel macron even theresa may Löfven in sweden anna solberg in norway the finnish prime minister i forgot his name but they seem to be doing the same the same thing there and trudeau of course and why to gain some kind of popularity points? Well, sorry, I digress. Let's get back to what needs to be done. We have to fight Islam. And how do we do that? Well, close all mosques to incite violence against non-Muslims and against what they consider the wrong kind of Muslims. For instance, Sunnites against Shiites. Everyone against the Ahmadiyya, etc. My, my guess is that that would make most of the mosques, mosques by the way, and as I said, close the borders toward Muslim immigration. We could accept Christian, Christian refugees from the Islamic world. Fine. I mean, I am in favor of a, of, of a Christian state in the Middle East. But as long as there is none, okay, we, we could accept that. And there, there, But we cannot have Islamic immigration. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. And I know this might sound very hard. This sounds harsh, it sounds inhumane, well okay, for the sake of argument, let's say it's harsh, let's say it is, let's say anyone who says this is right, well okay. Do we want to be kind, or do we want to survive? And to whom do we want to be kind? Do we want to be kind to people who hate us, who wants to kill us, unless we convert to their murderous ideology, or unless if we are Christians or Jews, we might get off by being second-class citizens and paying the, the, the special penalty tax and being imposed with all kinds of things that, that make us second or even third-class citizens. Or do we want to be kind towards our children or our grandchildren? And I am not talking about color here. I'm not talking about ethnicity. I'm not even talking about culture. So don't give me, don't give me that. I'm talking about an evil ideology. And, I mean, some people might think or might say that, well, well, Swede, aren't you a Christian? Well, yes, I am. 
So shouldn't you love your neighbor? I love my neighbor. I do. But what did Jesus say about the Pharisees? He said that you should beware of uh, you should beware of their ideas. And what does Paul say? He says that there is no excuse for you who do evil, and government carries the sword to punish the evildoers. So there, I mean, if there's going to be an inter-Christian debate with someone, I don't think so. But if there would be, some of the Swedish and Norwegian Christians would give me that. There is no biblical support for having suicidal immigration policies. And when I talk about immigration policies now, I talk about Islam. That's what worries me. I'm not worried about uh, Christian Africans moving, moving to Europe or the West. I'm not even I'm not worried about Buddhists or Hindus moving here. I mean, there was Vietnamese and Pakistani immigration to Norway that started roughly the same time. Well, and there was some some problems with the Vietnamese too to begin with. But we haven't heard anything about that in Norway for the last 25 or 30 years. Well, there is still problems with 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 some Pakistanis, but the problems isn't that they are Pakistanis. The problems is not in their skin color. The problem is the, ide the ideology they, they subscribe to, and that's what needs to be fought. And really, really my friends, that's what I have to say about this right now. I thought I'd give you a little picture of this city. This is what it looks like. It's a wonderful city, but uh, there are things going on in this city that, that isn't good. And now it's been peace and quiet for some time in Oslo. I saw the police cars today, and maybe they are they are showing presence to make well stone throwers and car burners stay away. We're not Sweden yet. Thank God for that. We might be, I hope not. Anyway, I'm getting way too worried you now and too much digression. So let's just say this is what I have to say about this right now. And I would like to thank all the people who are supporting this channel through prayers, through Patreon, through PayPal. And I have introduced some tiers that I will describe in the information box below. I'm going to start sending out the first ones in a few days. I just have to work a little on my on my most recent article. And I am going to start sending this, this out to, to those who have met the tiers. And, uh, well, if you got something to say, if you agree or if you disagree, tell me in the, in the, comment, in the comment field below. Please share this video. Uh, on social media and if you like this video please like it and of course I would also like to encourage you to support this channel and as I said there are some tiers and you will see them in the box below this is a sweet speaks have a nice day